Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In the last video, I talked about the future of my channel and how I will be covering more get home bag and bug out bag obscure items that people sometimes forget to toss in there, and this is one of them. A good, powerful whistle. What you're looking at right now is the Wee Knife. Yes, that is the name of the company. The Wee Knife Titanium Emergency Whistle. Let me just give you guys some quick specs. Length, just under 2.2 inches. Weight, 8.7 grams. 0 0.31 ounce and this little guy is capable of putting out a hundred and twenty decibels now for those of you who are knowledgeable about sound you know that anything 80 decibels or above people really should wear ear protection so this little guy is extremely powerful 120 decibels. It might look like brass with a little bit of green tint. This is actually two-tone titanium. Yep, titanium. Let me just give you guys a closer look at it. All right. As you can see, it has a rather substantial hole for a split ring that you can put through there. Again, very short, very tiny, but very powerful. Not quite sure if you guys can see that or not, but there is a half moon plastic insert on the inside of it, and all cylinder shaped whistles have that, all of them, regardless of price, so that they'll actually work. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm showing you this. Like I said, it's a very obscure item that people sometimes forget to toss into their bug out bags, get home bags, heck, this is a good item that should be part of your EDC, yes, even if you're a man. Now, let's just deal with it. Obviously, if you're a man, you don't have to worry about being sexually assaulted on a dark street. That's not why this is an essential item in your bug out bag, get home bag, and quite frankly, something you should have as part of your EDC. Now, I've been EDCing this little guy on my main key ring for several weeks now, and I'll tell you why. A while back, there was a gentleman who was driving along, very familiar stretch of road. He lost control of his vehicle. He ended up going off-road into a crater and he was trapped in his vehicle windows broken busted out for three days no food no water he screamed for help now this was a somewhat busy road and several cars passed by no one could hear him screaming from down below this was a road that bicyclists used and joggers. No one could hear him screaming. Compared to a really powerful whistle, such as this one, the human voice is absolutely terrible for being loud enough or traveling far enough that people could hear. Now that particular story has a happy ending because Someone filed a missing persons report. 
And the police did eventually find, I'm sorry, the police did eventually locate that gentleman. But yeah, three days without water, he was in really bad shape. Horribly dehydrated, near death, absolutely miserable experience. They got him to the hospital and he survived. But imagine if he had something like this, or even a really good plastic whistle. He could have signaled for help and been found before those three days. He was actually lucky that the police found him. I don't know about you, but I don't want to rely on luck for my survival. Now, there is a standard international technique for using a whistle in order to signal for help when you really need it. Basically, it's three quick, short blasts. Blow the whistle once, pause for a second, blow it a second time, pause again, blow it a third time. Wait a few seconds, and then repeat. After that, wait about 30 seconds and then start the whole process all over again. And yes, that is the standard international way to signal for help. People who are aware of it, and it's a significant population, I'm sorry, it's a significant portion of the population throughout the world. It doesn't matter if you're vacationing in France and you don't speak the language. If you're in trouble. It doesn't matter if the person you're signaling to doesn't speak English or if they don't speak your language. It is the international recognized three blasts. So please keep that in mind in case you need to use a whistle. And you really don't need a titanium whistle like this one. A plastic whistle will do unless you live in a particularly cold environment in which plastic whistles will crack. As far as metal whistles go, cold environment, warm them up with your hands and then three quick blasts when you need it. Now this particular whistle will set you back about $22 I highly recommend it. I'm not going to demonstrate how loud it is because this thing is extremely loud. Again, 120 decibels. That is very impressive for a whistle of this size. Set you back about $22, maybe a bit more. I think it's worth every penny. Another good titanium whistle that's going to be a bit less expensive are the ones made by Vargo Titanium. Their whistles are a little skinnier. You can put a split ring through those, although the opening is not going to be that big. And you have something that you could signal for help. I mean, Imagine being in a localized emergency, like maybe a wildfire that's approaching your home, and firefighters haven't gotten it under control, so you need to bug out. You grab your bag, you grab your family members, hopefully they have individual bug out bags for them as well, and you head out, and you're trying to get out. Well. Realistically, something could happen to your vehicle. You might have to try to bug out on foot. Imagine if you get injured. Imagine if one of your family members gets injured. Well, it's time to stop and signal for help. So you better have a couple of really good whistles in your bug out bag. You should have a couple in your get home bag and you should definitely have at least one on you. Just make sure it's reliable, make sure it's loud. 
I think we've all seen those brightly colored aluminum cylinder whistles being sold at gas stations and hardware stores. They usually sell for a dollar for two. Those are garbage. Seriously. No matter what whistle you choose, whether it's titanium, maybe an old-fashioned chrome-plated metal whistle, or even a plastic whistle, when your lips touch the whistle and you gently blow into it, it should make a pretty loud sound just by barely even blowing into it. If it doesn't, if you have to blow into it like a lunatic to get it to make some sound, that whistle is garbage. Pick a different one to EDC. Pick a different one to toss in your bags. This is extremely important. And I'm just going to cover one last quick thing. If you're in a bug out scenario and a family member gets hurt, and your mentality is, well, I'm just going to have to leave them behind to save my own skin. Well, if that's your mentality, then you're a scumbag. Please unsubscribe from my channel if you're a scumbag. There are people out there like that, unfortunately. And quite frankly, if you're one of those, I do not want to help you with any future videos. For the rest of you, please, please, you never know when you might need a really good whistle. Make sure to EDC at least one, toss at least a couple into your get home bag, into your bug out bag. Make sure every family member who has a bug out bag has at least one whistle in there. Seriously. This is small, it's ridiculously lightweight, it barely takes up any space, and you might just need this in order to signal for help if you or a family member gets injured. Please keep in mind that poor gentleman who spent three days in his car screaming for help and had to rely on luck to save him. Alright, that's it for today guys. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.